Moving on. So here's a look at some more complicated MO diagrams. Okay. So let's let's look at um, N2. Okay. And so you notice here with N2, we're starting at the valence. Okay. We could certainly put the core electrons there. All right. So notice here I'm starting at 2s. So if I wanted to draw this thing from the ground up, you know, I'm really terrible at uh, these kind of drawings, right? So that would be 1s and 1s, okay? And we know each of our nitrogens has a full 1s. If we go look at the periodic table, we can see that the 1s level for nitrogen is filled, four electrons. So that means we would get in our one sigma and our one sigma star, you know, that'd be one sigma, one s, right? We would have one, two, three, four. So at first you think, well, why does nitrogen form a bond? Shouldn't that all cancel out? Well, you have to remember, it's got this one s level populated, but then, right, we go up to the next level and it's got the two s level all filled out as well, as you can see right here, okay? So nitrogen also has 2s and so i'll remind you right each nitrogen atom is 1s2 2s2 2p3 so we could see that going up this ladder right we would have 1s2 there's 2s2 and there's 2p3 on the other side right you know here is our other nitrogen atom there's a 1s2 way down here a 2s2 and then a 2p3 so it's really all about this valence level that's what's going to give us the bonding okay and if we go through and now start counting up all of our bonds so check it out we end up with six electrons to distribute in this top level one two three four five six okay and when we put those all down there um what we can see is we actually need to create a new bond when we put these two p's together right so let's just back up for a second and look at that. Remember, when we added two p's together, um, we can make a sigma 2p bond. We can make a pi 2p bond. Um, we can actually make two kinds of pi 2p bonds. So the way that this diagram works now, when we go to this 2p level, notice that we have to make uh, four bonds in total, or four, I should say, excuse me, um, four molecular orbitals and those molecular orbitals are the pi 2p the sigma 2p the pi star 2p that's our antibond and the sigma star 2p okay and getting these in the right order is a little tricky like why is the pi lower than the sigma and now if you notice with oxygen it flips the sigma is now lower than the pi I'm not gonna hold you responsible for that information for this class. That would be a little bit more of an advanced topic. Um, but all the same, if we go and look at what this MO3 predicts for nitrogen, you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six bonding electrons minus zero anti-bonding electrons divided by two gives me a bond order of three. And if you recall from our Lewis structure, nitrogen has a triple bond and that triple bond consists of one pi i'm just going to call it arbitrarily x doesn't matter we'll call that one pi x one pi y and we'd be tempted to say that it's pi z but remember the pz makes the sigma bond, right? Let's look at that one more time, right? We know that my 2pz makes a sigma 2p, my 2px makes a pi 2p, and my 2py makes a pi 2p, okay? So that's where we get the triple bond prediction in nitrogen. There's one sigma bond, there it is, and two pi bonds, okay? Beautiful. So now, what about O2, okay? Well, if we go through and we populated it all, we remember that each oxygen atom is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, um, and here it is, so we're only looking at the valence shell because the valence shell is what gives us our bonding characteristics, okay? 
So here's our 2s2 level and then our 2p4 level, right? But we have two of them, right? Two oxygen atoms trying to bond. Um, and so that gives us now eight electrons to distribute in this MO. And once again, the order changes for nitrogen and oxygen. And I'll show you a little bit more why, but again, I'm not going to hold you too um, heavily responsible for that information. So we can see now with oxygen, what's the story here? Well, we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. But remember, only six of those are bonding electrons. Uh, two of these up here are anti-bonding electrons, divided by two equals two. Okay, so what's the deal with oxygen here? Well, we remember the Lewis structure predicted a double bond. One of those is a sigma, and one of those is a pi. So what's going on with, these, with this other? Like, you would think that there would be three bonds from this discussion. However, we've got two antibonding electrons that negate two of these pi electrons. So what that means, these two antibonding electrons end up appearing out here, okay? And I know that, that I realize that looks funky. So if we were drawing the oxygen Lewis structure, right? Two, four, six, seven, eight, okay? Two, four, six, seven, eight. As it turns out, oxygen is what we call a di radical. It has two unpaired electrons, and there they are. So we never would have been able to predict that from just doing our Lewis structure, right? When we do our Lewis structure, we just kind of think of it as, oh, there's two lone pairs on each oxygen atom. But it's not true. It's actually a di radical. And that's part of why oxygen is so reactive, right? Our atmosphere, and I'm going to come back to this, talking about oxygen and nitrogen at the end of this lecture, but our atmosphere is 80-20. Oops, that's not a 20. Uh, our atmosphere is 80-20 oxygen to nitrogen. Nitrogen is more or less unreactive. That triple bond makes it very stable, no antibonding electrons. Oxygen, on the other hand, is very reactive, right? Um, we use it for energy. I breathe in energy, or I breathe in oxygen, and my body can convert that into energy with my respiration system, okay? We also know that oxygen, under um, certain conditions, can ignite, right, via combustion, okay? Um, so oxygen is very reactive, and it's because it's a di-radical. All right. So what about when we have heteronuclear diatoms, okay? So hetero meaning um, the two atoms are different. So I'm only going to discuss this very, very briefly. Um, but what you can see here, one example I have up here is NO. Um, and if we were to go and do the Lewis structure of NO, we would find that it's a radical, okay? It's got one unpaired electron. So if we were to, to do that, right, we remember that um, nitrogen has five electrons, oxygen has six. So that gives me 11 electrons. And remember, when we have an odd number of electrons, we're going to have a radical. Okay. So what do we predict from the bonding order from this thing? Um, and also, for one, I should say that when we do these heteronuclear, the electronegative element is always lower, the more electronegative element, okay? So you notice here, this is my 2s for the nitrogen level, okay? But my 2s for the oxygen level is lower. So it's, it's on these MO diagrams, the more electronegative element is drawn lower in energy, okay? And once again, I'm not gonna hold you too responsible for knowing what order they appear in. So now if we look at my nitrogen, there's my one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. For my oxygen, there's my one, two, three, four, five, six valence electrons. So when they all mix, right, that's three um, and four is seven electrons. We've got to populate one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I do my bonding um, order, right, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, okay, minus one divided by two gives me two and a half. 
Well, what does a two and a half bond order look like? Well, remember, if we had used our Lewis structure to predict uh, what this thing would look like, you know, we would get something like this. Uh, let me count correctly here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, eleven. It's a radical. And so the unpaired electron ends up going on the nitrogen. Okay. Um, and so that that's more or less what a, you know, when we have a half bond order, we can generally expect that there's an unpaired electron. And NO is very reactive, okay? As you might guess, because it's a radical. So what about something simple like HF, okay? Well, my Lewis structure predicts HF looks something like this, okay? Um, and it's just one simple sigma bond, right? And there it is, okay? So that's, that's the story for HF, pretty easy. Great.